Welcome back guys. So today we're doing a quick follow-up concerning the Hyperkin Retron SQ Square, whatever the heck it's called. I did a review not too long ago, a few days ago. Take a look at that video. I'm not really too impressed with this thing with the way they shipped it. Game Boy Advance is in beta. Figure it out yourself. And I have a very strong feeling that Hyperkin is just pretty much gonna be like, uh, figure it out yourself. Let the community fix it, right? And essentially that's where we're at right now. Yes, it's barely been out, but when you take a look back at the Retron 5, how much did Hyperkin support that device? Pretty much not at all. They just sold it, right? And that was kind of a, an annoyance. The device has its purposes. It works all right for certain things. But with this Retron Square, Game Boy Advance being in beta, barely performs. You have no backup features. Nothing special about this little box. It's half the price of the Retron 5. Yet, like I said previously, the Retron 5 has a million times more things you could do with just Game Boy. Not just all the other systems that supports the same damn company. Don't know why they went about it this way. I think they just want everybody to figure it out themselves. And essentially that's where we're at. So I wanted to show you with Game Boy Advance, holy crap, like they have a frame skip action going on and it performs very bad. It looks horrible in my opinion. Like, I mean, some people may see this and be like, oh, I don't really see too much of an issue here. I mean, it is playable, but anything could be playable if you press a freaking button and it does something. It doesn't mean it's enjoyable. And this shit is not enjoyable in the state that it's in. And as you may have already seen, I don't know if you've seen it, but I have my controller plugged into this USB hub and I have a dongle, dongle action for this wireless keyboard right here. I've also tried a few other things plugging in a uh, external USB flash drive to some extent of success. So I'll kind of talk about that in a moment. But the keyboard here, I'm gonna press F1 and boom, where are we at? We're in a RetroArch freaking menu, okay? So we could fix some shits in here for Game Boy Advance in particular. So let's go ahead and go to options, hit enter. Oh, that frame skip action, they have it set to four. That's why it sucks, donkey ball. So we put that to zero. Now I believe, okay, let's go to uh, settings, video. We could we can mess around with the aspect ratio. Right now it's set to 10.9. We can set it to 4.3. I think default, they just have it at 4.3, I'm not sure. Uh, but you have all the different options. One to one, two to one, three to two, three to four, everything, you know whatever, to your heart's extent, you can mess with all this, custom aspect ratios, all this great stuff, the resolution, a lot of little things you can mess with. If you followed my channel in the past, we have dealt with this stuff quite a bit over the years with RetroPie and various other builds and emulation setups that use RetroArt, awesome software. So you have that where you can mess around with that, change the aspect ratio to whatever you feel necessary, okay? Okay, now before we do anything else, let's go ahead and just get back into the game and show you like you just seen a second ago how sluggish this shit was. Now look at, look at, look at how smooth. Why could, like, <laughs> like they had the frame skip on, why? Like, is it just so they can have like dumb little things fucked off with this and then like, release updates that tweak a, a minor setting in RetroArch that should have been tweaked to begin with? Like, I don't really understand it because performance is fine once you take that frame skip off. Or were there certain games that they found just couldn't perform without frame skip on? I don't know. I just, I'm not sure what these shenanigans these guys are pulling here. Like, why even bother release this thing if you can't even have Game Boy Advance listed as of a functioning feature, right? So there's that. Let me show you one other thing real quick because I've taken the micro SD card off of this thing. Um, I put the new firmware, all that good stuff. Like this RetroArch menu is just accessible if you plug in a keyboard. You can plug in a keyboard, play your games, but if you want to use like the Super Nintendo controller, you're going to have to use a USB hub because you just have that, that one port up in the front. Um, so USB hub, I have this Anker which I use for a lot of things. I have a few of these, so that, that works out fine. Um, but the one thing I noticed is when you load up games, 
Uh, some games, like Game Boy Advance, for whatever reason, Donkey Kong Country, whenever I reset the system or power it off, power it back on, it still does take a moment for this to load. But these games, like Game Boy, Game Boy Color games, they, they load pretty quick after the first initial. Uh, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's being loaded into the memory card and it seems to just stay there. So I've reformatted this a few times, but I do have a few games listed here. As you see, we have Donkey Kong Country plugged in. Let's go ahead and start up Zelda. Let's run it and see what's up. Is my, is it gonna run? Yes, it is. You see, it's running right now. Don't, your eyes cannot deceive you if I'm showing it to you, right? It's there, no shenanigans. It works. Let me see if my save file's on here. Yes, it is. Okay, so very nice. We have our, our save file. We go in here and mess around with shaders and all that shit. Like, they didn't want to put their own shell over, like, RetroArch. They didn't want to make their own menu system. I really wish they would have. This system, I could have seen it being of more value. But in the end, it just seems like this is something they want you to figure out and to mess around with. And the community, I don't know how far they're going to take this because this is simply just hitting a button on a keyboard to access this stuff. And you have a lot of things you can you know, that are accessible. But the one problem is, is like earlier when I was messing with this, I set up all my hotkeys on the controller uh, to be able to access this menu instead of using the keyboard and that works, but I cannot save anything. It won't save my configurations with anything for the most part. I don't know why. There's been some things like my aspect ratio seems to, to just stay sometimes, but not always, but other configurations don't take as far as saving. And also trying to load up games through the micro SD card. I, I, I had to go through that a bunch of different times where there was an extra partition, and this is all Linux based stuff. So you have to uh, be able to read and write to Linux you know, partitions and whatnot. Uh, and there's various ways you can go about doing that. That's beyond the scope of this video at this time. But there was a partition on this SD card that had absolutely nothing on it. And I formatted it to a Linux, you know, format, loaded games up, and I can't get the system to recognize that. Actually, when I mess with that partition, the whole system just won't boot up anymore. Even though I've confirmed to the best of my ability that there was nothing on that partition, but just by me adding something to it, the system doesn't boot up. It's kind of weird. So I found, the other area where it's saving, like when it, when it dumps the game, where it saves those games, I found that and I've loaded games to it, but they don't show up once I get to the screen to, to load content. Or if I try to scrape through games that I've added, uh, it won't work. I've even tried with a USB, you know, formatted different various ways and I can't get anything to work. Somebody will figure it out, uh, but at this time I just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. So just pointing that out there, you know, if, if this is a machine that you want to mess around with, yeah, you're gonna, you know, there's gonna be things you could do here to, to have some fun, I suppose. Uh, and then there's gonna be some things that just don't really function the way I would have hoped them to function. Most people would have liked them to function, being able to back up saves and just having different features. This thing's very lacking. Um, if you want something that plays your Game Boy cartridges, Okay, I, I guess, but there's a lot of options for that. So hey, to each their own, enjoy whatever you want to enjoy. Me personally, the only reason I busted this bitch out of the box again was just to test this out. So I had a few people tweeting at me, twatting at me, letting me know like, hey, there's some shit going on, man. So I decided to try to dig as much as I can. And I don't know how much more time I'm gonna spend fucking with this thing because I just don't really see the potential I love Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games, but I'd rather play them other ways. So that's just where I'm at. And as you see, I just loaded up Mario Tennis. I don't even have the cartridge in there. Just loading it up. I don't know what the, how, how many games it'll save because it seems sometimes like the, uh, the games will be deleted. Uh, I don't know how many games it'll save on there. It's just a 512 megabyte card that's in there. And I believe there's five partitions on it. Um, once you have the, the operating system, all the software, not really much of an operating system, but you know what I'm saying. To be able to play these games by plugging in your cartridge, if you take that, that micro SD card out, it just doesn't work. So there you go. 
See what else people come up with. I may revisit this again if something more interesting comes about, but just, you know, keyboard action, to get into retro arc, like, okay, I, I, I guess, but not a huge deal. Um, if you hit escape on the keyboard, um, it typically just backs out of everything and then like it doesn't reload the game. So I just point that out. If you hit escape, um, does, it, it winds up crashing or something or going back to this hyperkin screen and nothing ever comes back up. The only buttons you want to use are F1 to get into RetroArch, enter to progress forward, um, back to go back. That kind of thing. Or if you're using your controller, the B button to go back, the A button to enter, and that's it. If you hit escape on this, on the keyboard, it goes to that screen. The more you know. Appreciate you guys. Let me know if you have any other ideas of things to mess with. If you've seen any more, let me know. Appreciate it. Peace out. Bye-bye. Big ass thumb button in your face. And boom.